What's up guys, it's Alec Mac 111 and I've been asked for a little while to go ahead and do a loadout. So I'm not going to do my exact loadout, I'm actually going to go over what I think is a good budget milsim loadout. So obviously I'm not wearing my camouflage right now, it's really hot with these light boxes so I don't wear it. Um, but what I use, you can either run with a standard BDU set and pick a color, either multicam or something. All this gear is multicam. However, something that I just want to recommend, I know I talk about these a lot, um, but these flight suits are awesome. I got this for $40 at my local surplus store. So whenever I run green team, I have an entire onesie. We call them onesies. And so they have like pouches in the side. They have zippers. Um, I'll keep like my dead rag in my front left pocket. Um, they got a bayonet pouch if you ever want to run a bayonet. Um, but these things are super great. They're only 40 bucks, at least in my field, and I'm guessing you can get it cheaper online on eBay or something, but I think they're awesome, and it's easier than buying a whole set of BDUs. It's just really easy to throw on. Then you can wear like compression shorts underneath, um, and e you can either use them in both warm and cold weather situations. Once it gets too hot, they're not super good, but just quick shout out for those. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start up top with what I normally wear in my head. So this is just an Emerson helmet. This is a fast helmet that actually has the holes on it. I do have a helmet cover on there. This is a helmet cover um, from Airsoft Peak. I got an AOR2 helmet cover because they were super cheap. And then I'll run some pouches, end up having a little strobe light. Um, but honestly, any sort of helmet will do. And then I have a curved adhesive mount up here on the front and then some rails on the side. Um, I used to use my contour on this right side and I used to use like a flashlight on the left. But honestly, as long as you have some sort of helmet system, if you're playing in a milsim event, I would really recommend running some sort of helmet system. I have uh, completely gutted the inside with the pads and stuff. So I have Team Wendy, um, a pad set, the Zorbium Zap pads, and then I also have an Opscore H Nape. Most of you probably don't know exactly what that is, but it's just a, basically a really good helmet set. So the shell of the helmet's still light and cheap and doesn't have any ballistic protection or anything like that. However, the insides are super comfortable and very high quality. And honestly, I built the inside stuff for, I think it was like the, the helmet pad set was like 20 bucks. And then this Opscore H and it was only like 40. So it's just a really good investment. And I've used, I've used this here, this helmet for like five years. So finally, after like four years in, I got a new um, replacement. I've been running this probably for the past year or two. Um, since I started really like getting into Milsim and running events. I played Airsoft actually for, it'll be 10 years starting in February. However, I didn't start running a helmet until probably like four years in because that's when I started getting a little bit more serious. So enough with that. Um, I also run ESS Turbofan goggles. So I'll have the Turbofan goggles and I'll use these. Um, these are the ones I recommend. Honestly, if you guys want to get a pair of goggles, I would go on eBay right now, look for ESS Profile goggles. And so they'll look exactly like this. However, they won't have the Turbofans. But most of you, I'm, I'm guessing, will have problems with fogging. That's one of the things I see as an issue in Airsoft more than anything else, and it absolutely sucks. But if you go and buy these and rip out the foam on the top side, they are still fully ANSI rated. However, it allows for air movement so that when you're running, the only time I really fog, these goggles fog, um, is when I'm sitting still, and then that's when I'll have the fan run. Um, but it's hard to run the fan because then the, it picks up the audio in my camera and I don't want to do that. But ESS Profile Goggles, go on eBay, find a new set, make sure the lenses are a little clear. I actually had to just buy a new pair of lenses because mine, mine are destroyed. But for the new lens, I think it was like 11 bucks. And then I'd also recommend running something like a face mask. I run a mesh lower. I have it uh, organized so that it can it use the straps that come with um, most of the helmet setups and so you can weave them into the side just kind of cuts down on cord usage Which is really nice. And so I like to I like to have that. I think that's just um, something that's really good Okay, we're gonna go over my gun real quick just so we can get that out of the way so you guys can see um, This is something I picked this I would normally run a pretty expensive gun just because I've played airsoft for so long However, I've picked a gun that I really like you guys hopefully saw me do a review on this This is the Lancer tactical warlord series. This is the 18 inch barrel um, and then I have a Strike Industries vertical uh, angled foregrip on there. And then I have just a sight mark red dot, which is really nice. And then one thing that I actually really love, um, something that uh, I just started using probably about six months ago. They're called Tough One Grips. So you've probably never heard of them because I had never heard of them. They're actually a local company in Ohio. And so they sell these grips for like 10, 15 bucks. Um, sometimes they have different models depending on pricing, um, different colors. So there's like tan and then I'll show you the tan one later and the black one. But these are like 15 bucks and they're super, super comfortable. And so I just really like them because it kind of gives you a rubbery grip to your mag. And because I have bigger hands, I like a bigger grip. So it adds a little bit bigger um, diameter to the grip as well. And then it's really nice with gloves on. They don't stick uh, nearly as well. So I think that's cool. The gloves I run are Oakley hard knuckle gloves. 
I um, I would recommend investing honestly in these. Even if you're a newer player, I would recommend buying some Oakley hard knuckle gloves. These things are like 80 bucks. I got them, I think six or seven years ago and they're still working fine. They are permanently sweat stained. On them, you can tell what used to be the normal color and what is no longer the normal color. I've absolutely destroyed them, but these gloves have saved my fingers from getting hit so many times in airsoft. And so they're just super comfortable. They allow quite a bit of range and mobility so they don't hinder a whole lot when I'm shooting. I know some guys will cut the trigger fingers off, but I've never had to and I play in Ohio, so I like to keep my fingers warm and they do a decent job at keeping them warm. They do get wet, which is the only problem. But just adding the Kevlar gloves are awesome and it's just sweet and they look cool. Um, I mean, you can tell right here, like adding Kevlar, carbon fiber, um, knuckles on them look sweet and then like a cool camouflage. But these things are awesome and they've saved my fingers from getting hit multiple, multiple times. All right, next we're going to go over the plate carrier. So as you can see, this is a little bit bigger on me. This is not size to me. This is size to my six foot four friend, Justin. And I'm not six four, I'm five foot 10. So I run a cry JPC. However, this is a great budget plate carrier. So I'll link this in the description. This is a multi-cam, uh, it's a fly multi-cam plate carrier. I don't know exactly uh, what version they call it, but it's their main plate carrier. And so this thing is awesome. It works well. It's really, really high quality. So they actually use a thousand D Kodura nylon on their stuff. So every part of their gear is for fly, at least for one of the, I would say one of the best cheaper gear that will hold up for a long, long time. It's got thousand D Kodura nylon. And so it is kind of thick, kind of heavy compared to normal like condor stuff, but this thing's going to last, I bet 20 times as long as any sort of condor gear because it's made so much uh, with so much higher quality and then the stitching is also done a lot better on these i love condor stuff and they're great however if you can get something for a condor price through fly it's really really nice i'm running a triple on the front so this is a uh for milsim events one of the things that you really want to do is you want to have enough rounds and so you're able to carry a lot of mid caps at most of these events. You can't run high caps, so you can't just run three mags. If I play like an open play, I'm gonna run like four high caps and I'll just kind of take these mags out and then, and then put this Velcro part to my chest and then I'll keep a mag in the gun. And so I have 1200 rounds, but at a Millicent event, it's more realistic. So you only get a certain amount of mags and you actually have to reload instead of just sitting there and winding uh, on the bottom of your magazine. So I like to carry six on the front. That helps me a lot. I think that's something that you have six mags quick. Um, it's easy to carry all the mags here. I do on my plate carrier, I'll run stuff on like the cummerbund. I have uh, actually two mags right here. So if I need them, they're kind of like a emergency mags. And then on the back on my uh, mini map pack actually has four extra mags. So when I go to a Milsim event, I honestly take like close to 15 mags just in case I need them. Now, some of the more serious events like Milsim West, you count your rounds. And so this is not really for that. This is more for the entry level Milsim at your local field. This is probably what the rules are going to be. Hey, mid caps instead of high caps. So make sure you have enough mag pouches on your person in order for you to be able to be effective in the fight. And so I will try and carry as many mid caps as I can. Even if I don't use them, that's why I keep four of them on my backpack. I don't actually need to ever access them. But however, if there is a bad firefight where I need to go get mags, I'll say, hey, dude, grab some or grab me some mags. Or if you need to even let your buddy borrow some mags, it's a really cool system. And I like how it works. All right, we're going to go and move to the lower part of my gear now. We're going to go ahead and go over the belt. All right, so now we're going to go over what I would typically run on a belt setup. I actually ditched a belt setup a while ago, but that's because I can carry everything on my plate carrier. However, I really think that belts are a good system, and so I'm actually working on building another belt system for myself as well, as you can kind of tell with this. So I'm going to build a belt, but I want to run just the belt. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a pistol. So this is a Elite Force 1911. These things are awesome. Probably about my favorite Milsim pistol. These things just work well. They kick really hard and they're accurate. I have another one of those tough grips on here. So you can see that they're the Desert Serpentine pattern. And I just, once again, they have a really thick grip. And so I really like how they feel and they just work and they fit comfortably. I don't have a Serpa or I have a Serpa, but I don't have a Molly mount yet. So this is a paddle mount. If you kind of want to run inside your pants or whatever, it kind of works for this as in it wraps around and you can still draw on stuff. As you can see, there's a lanyard attached. However, if you're going to run a Serpa holster, which I recommend Serpa holsters are awesome. I would get the Molly mount so that you can run it and it'll be a little bit more stable on here instead of running like the belt or the paddle mount. You can tell there's something attached here for Milsim events more than anything. I see people lose their pistols and that's always a problem. You'll see a pistol over here. You'll see a pistol over here. This is a pistol lanyard leash system. So if it falls off, 
um, it's going to hold on to your pistol and so I have that run right back here through another pouch. You don't want to run it with through the same thing, you want to run it through just another um, standard molly system. For a belt, one of the biggest things you want to do is also run mags on here. So I, in the past, I have run fast mag pouches. I don't have any of them anymore since I stopped running a belt. I actually sold my whole belt setup. But you can run any sort of mag pouch here if you want. If that's your desire, if you want to do it. I didn't put any specifically on here because I want to talk about a few. I really like the uh, HSGI taco pouches. They're awesome. They're a little bit pricey, but they fit really well. And then you could even run like a double decker taco where you have an M4 mag and you have a pistol mag on the outside of it. You can run the Blue Force Gear Industries pouches, which I really like. They're very flat. They fit the mag really well. Or you can run just like a cheap uh, double decker um, condor mag. So anything that you want to use, it's not something like it's not specifically oh you have to use this brand or you have to use that brand but I want to talk about that and then also I just have a Condor pistol mag holster over here so one of the rounds there so if I can maybe need pistol mags you can kind of run one there and then have it on the outside so this is your primary place to reload for your AR this is actually where you re reload your AR and then if you happen to be running your pistol you have behind that some pistol rounds. This is how I've run it in the past. I've done a lot of research and this is what I like to be the best. If you have something different, I'd like to know where you run your pistol mags. Um, I also actually will tend to run some pistol mags in my admin pouch on um, my plate carrier, but for the most part, I found if you're running a belt, which I think is a lot of people like to do for Milsim, that back here is the best place because then you can reload quick and then go up and kind of into your stance again. It's very just, it's very simple and it's a very, um, very easy motion so that you can kind of, in a sense, if you're um, reloading, so you throw the mag out there, you can kind of come up at the same time so you're already, um, if you're, you're presenting your gun and profiling your gun, so you're shooting at people at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of different tactics and a lot of different strategies, but that's kind of what I use. On the back, I have just a standard dump pouch. This works well. I really like dump pouches. You can see I have Justin's D14 patch in there. Um, but this is just a standard dump pouch. I like this a lot. I don't know really like which one I like better. The big ones, you can hold a lot more mags, and they're not, they don't present as much weight. I have also ran in the past, I've ran, I uh, actually used a Pantac one that was like a foldable one, but I think for the most part, I really like a bigger dump pouch because when you're reloading, you kind of have to worry less about accuracy, but you can kind of just like throw it back in there and then you can come straight here with your gun and then come back out um, and engage targets again. It's It works well, um, it's an okay thing, but I, I just really like, I like, I think I like a bigger dump pouch. All right, now we're gonna go to the back of my plate here and we'll finish up the video there. One of the biggest issues I see at Milsim events is people passing out because of dehydration. People, drink water, it's awesome. It's kind of what our bodies, like 80% of our bodies are made up of. So I would recommend carrying a, a hydration bladder with you on the field. I know some people use water bottles. I tend to, tend to drink about a gallon of water a day, maybe like half a gallon of water a day. So I stay pretty much hydrated and then I'll kind of just have a water bottle or two in my dump pouch. I'll chug one and then I'll, I'll throw away the trash back in there and then and take care of it later. But some, for a lot of people, working with a hydration bladder works really well because there's a lot of people that need maybe more water than I do. I only weigh 160 pounds, so I can, because I drink water consistently, because I'm consistently hydrating and whenever I go back for lunch and stuff, um, but however, you need to run water. You need to have water. You need to always have access to water. So the Condor hydration bladder works pretty well, and then I've run this up here through the shoulder strap, and then you got your nipple right here so that you can uh, suck it for some water whenever you need it. Uh, this Condor one is black, so it's a little bit, doesn't match the plate or a ton, but I like to mix and match a little bit. And with backpacks, it doesn't matter as much. And then this can hold a ton of water if you, if you want. And then also, if you want to kind of carry some other stuff, I would really recommend getting another backpack. And so using another backpack, this one is just a standard one. This is actually from Airsoft Mega Store. Um, these are like super cheap right now. I think this is like 10 bucks. And so this is a cool color pattern, which is just really nice. But you can kind of throw this on over your plate carrier. And so when you're in a field, especially like a big event, you're going to need probably like a three-day assault pack at the minimum. However, if you're playing airsoft, maybe you can go use this at a smaller mil sim or even like an open play. I'll often carry a backpack. And so in there, you can keep something like maybe an extra gun if you want to run an extra gun or if you run gas pistols and stuff, you need propane. Um, this is also easy if you want to kind of run a system maybe where you want to have HPA set up. And then you can also just carry kind of like a bunch of these or even like a hat. So I put 
took some of the stuff that I had and made an example of this. But I really recommend getting an extra backpack because I think they're really important um, and it's just a good idea. So hopefully this video was good. I know it's a little bit long, but you guys have been asking for this, so I wanted to be intentional with getting your guys' requests out there and saying, hey, Alec Mack, how do I start Millicent? How do I do all this stuff? Um, this is the way that I would recommend it. And I once again, I didn't really put all the pouches on there. I didn't put, okay, you have to run this, you have to run this. I kind of left that up to interpretation, but I gave you an idea, hopefully, maybe where you want to run your specific pouches and where at least you have an idea, hey, this is a good place to run my pouches. Maybe I can change it up, but instead of running your pistol uh, right here where your main mags could be and you can only carry like three mags on the side, hopefully that gave you a better idea. This has been Alec Mac 1-on-1. I'll see you guys later.